Persons of interest in this case. Someone's trying to frame this. This is gonna be fine. Could be bad. It's very rare for a true crime podcast to do a sequel. We have a real opportunity here. Does anyone else feel like there's still a couple of loose ends? Get a new hobby, as long as it doesn't land you in jail. Like knitting? All right, don't be a smart ass. It's kind of her thing. We are looking for new evidence. You clearly know things that you're not sharing. You understand the definition of perjury? I know what perjury is. I don't. Our lives blow up if we all go down for this. Don't you want to clear your name, too? I have to see this through. Let's focus. I'll be right back. You can't leave me here. I'm that good at parties. Oh, hi. I'm, I'm nervous to talk to people because I can come off creepy. <laughs> keeps showing up in our apartments. Who's ever doing this is toying with us. This sends the investigation into a whole new direction. We hope it will take us to clues. It's a wall. And suspects. So what do we know about my daughter's murder? Maybe she killed Bunny. You think that woman stabbed someone eight times? We'll put a pin in her for now. Isn't this fun? As you can see, we're on fire. Deep breaths. We have two options. I slap you across the face, or we just skip to the part where you say, thanks, kid, that was tough to hear. Uh, not the slapping one. You need to go full Ollie Mabel here. What? Ollie Mabel. All our names put into one. Where is the Charles in Ollie Mabel? The Charles is silent. Hi there. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, right. I apologize. Um, no you know, worries. if any, it has nothing to do with how excited I am to, uh, to to talk to you because I am. I, if anything, sometimes changes in the course of like, you know, the normal schedule or ritual of, of coming home. It just threw me. So I had all of a sudden different circumstances getting home today. Like I ended up riding home early and it just sort of threw me off. It's just no, no worries so I, at all. I wanted to explain it. I typically very on time and I apologize if you were waiting around. No problem. No, I actually, funny enough, I'm in prep on a pilot in Boston. So I'm oh. also totally thrown out of my usual circumstances. I'm staying in this like corporate apartment. Oh, wow. And I was like rushing home so that I could be here for this. Okay. okay. Um, well, so, then, yeah, it all worked out. You, yeah, I so, had a few extra so, minutes and it was perfect. Okay. Well, still, you you rushed. It's okay. And I dropped. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think everybody out there probably already realizes who's who's the who's kind of to root for here. So it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, um, really, it's nice to meet you, though. It's very nice to meet you. Um, yeah, you know, and the work you're doing is wonderful. And uh, ha ha tell me a little Thank bit you. more about yourself because uh, you've directed now <clears throat> five episodes of Only Murders in the Building. Um, I did four. Four. Two episodes in season one and two episodes in season two. Right, and then um, okay, and then also the boys in in Apartment B. It's called the boy in Apartment B. The boy. The boy me. in. Six Six B. Six the boy, B. The boy six from B. six B. Let me rephrase. <laughs> and <laughs> not that I'm gonna edit or anything. Don't get me wrong. And the boy in uh six B, that's right. Um and uh, and now what's the Boston project? Gosh, you are on a tear. I'm on a tear. You I'm, are. I'm just doing everything. Um no, it's it. uh it's an AMC pilot, and <laughs> I believe it's being announced any moment now my attachment. So um, I guess I should wait until that's kind of formally comes out before I say anything more about it. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, but it's shooting in, in Boston. And that's where you are, Boston. you said? Yeah. Where, where, what neighborhood are you in? Like um, down to, I'm actually like in south of Boston in a little place called Quincy. Oh, sure, sure. Are I, you I, from I, this area? No, no. But I when, when I, I was going to school in Boston back in the day. Uh, okay. Have you heard of Harvard? Oh yeah, I think I I think I might have heard a thing or two about Harvard. I, I didn't go there. <laughs> you didn't go there. No. Yeah. Yeah. There's I went lots to, of other great schools around this uh, in this in these parts though. They tell me. Yeah, I went to uh, 
Back Bay Community College. Have you heard of it? I'm, I'm just not. Kidding. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> where where is that? That's that's around here. It's not in Back Bay, oddly. It's in Brookline. I don't know why, but no, no, that would be possibly. It's right there next to each other. I lived, yeah, back in the mid '80s, but that's that's okay. We don't. Where where do you typically in L.A. or something or where? where? I'm I'm actually based in Brooklyn. Oh, not you are Brookline, Brooklyn. That's right. Well, yes, and um, okay. Well, um, I you know spent many years there. Nice. I, I've actually not spent much time in the Boston area at all, so it's very new to me. Yeah. Well, I meant I'm in Brooklyn, but yes. Um, oh, you meant in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. I've been so we're you know possibly have been neighbors. That's all I'm saying. But I left. Um, anyway, I'm up here in the Hudson Valley now, but uh, okay. Busier That's than fine. ever, though. Um, so okay. So yeah, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, where, like, how long have you been? First of all, is this? I should. I wanted to ask one more question about the Boston project that we can't talk about, and that is, your attachment is is it is it a more a formal type of relationship with the series? Unlike director for hire, let's say that's going on in the other series. It sounds like where, yeah, where so this one you'd be like I don't know about showrunner necessarily, but maybe you would be directing most of the or all the episodes are. I'm directing uh, the first two out of six, okay. so the first third of the series, and I'm doing the pilot, so I'm um, director and EP on the first two episodes. Where, oh, an EP, but I wonder why, um, I just don't, I wonder why they don't want to have a continuity of directors. What's the behind, do you know the reason behind that? You know, they, they actually did, um, this would have been a great show to do it on, and I think they did originally want me to direct more of the series, um, right. but I actually have a film that's supposed to go right after. No, of course you do. So I'm hoping to, yeah, it's been, it's been a few years since I've made a film. So I'm, I'm looking very forward to hopefully getting the next one off the ground. Um, okay. Right. What well, well, it sounds like you're getting ready to make a film though. Is that what you're saying? I, I am. So I'm literally prepping this pilot right now and we shoot in um, September, October. Uh -huh. And then right after that, I'll start soft prep on a feature and hopefully go into official prep on the feature in the first quarter of next year. I see. Okay. You don't have any young children, do you? For God's sake, you. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't actually. So these, all these projects are my babies. <laughs> right. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. So, and uh, so how did you, how did you get your start in, in this? What were you always, did you always want to be behind the camera? Um, I, I definitely kind of early on knew that I wanted to, um, be in the industry. Let's say I was a little like obsessed with television and film as a kid, like just watching everything and just like pointing at the screen and being like that, I want to do that. Like, just, I want to do that. Um, so it was kind of like a very early thing. I had no idea what a director was, but yeah. you know, my parents bought a camcorder when I was 12 and they handed it to me for some reason. I, I, like to work things and figure out how things work. So I read the manual as any little nerd would do. And <laughs> nice I started sense. filming all kinds of like family events, which were super boring. So I started telling people what to do on camera. Right. I started telling <laughs> them where to walk and how right. to walk and what to say. And I started giving them like funny things to do really just to entertain myself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but it turned out that it entertained other people too. So that was kind of how I started I guess directing, you could say, right? Um, even even before I even knew what directing was, but I I really didn't know that I wanted to become a filmmaker until a little bit later in my life when I had a, a sort of a political awakening that made me realize that um, there was a huge lack of representation of authentic Arabs in in film and TV, um, and that. And not only was there a lack of, there was a, you know, underrepresentation. there was like a really dangerous misrepresentation that was happening. And I was, my family and I were being like directly impacted by that during the first Gulf War. Um, and that had, a, that left a huge impression on me. It was like this political awakening. I was, you know, a teenager and I just sort of realized that I, at that point in my life, I really realized I, I want to represent, I want to be able to change the fact that but, we're being so misrepresented. I, I, <clears throat> Your family um, are um, is Palestinian American, correct? Mm -hmm. So you were born here. I was the first in my family born in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, um, first born American and grew up going back and forth constantly. So I grew up between rural Ohio and mostly I'm Man Jordan, but also traveling to the West Bank 
as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and do you, are you, uh, I mean, is it, do you get back much to, to Israel these days? Um, I, so my, most of my family is now in Jordan. Mm -hmm. Um, I travel there often Jordan. I have some sisters in Dubai, uh, but I do get back to the West bank as much as I can. Um, I was just there actually in 2019 for a festival, um, uh, a Palestinian film festival. So yeah, I, I try to get back as often as, as possible. Um, yeah, the, well, and you know, again, a, a very rich tradition in the arts. I mean, you know, um, right. Uh, uh, you know, Arab, um, culture, yeah. uh, to say the least, um, and Palestinian cinema, I mean, despite, you know, all of the extreme challenges of occupation, uh, yes, and, right. you know, I mean, Palestinian cinema is strong, which is fantastic. So do you feel, have you thought, it sounds like, again, maybe this this uh, upcoming film you are preparing for, about to start preparing for, uh, might have a political theme to it. Um, well, the one that I'm, so I actually have two films coming up and, and one of them does the one okay. that will hopefully be going first does, does it's, it's quite political, but in a very different way. And it's actually a very subversive kind of irreverent comedy, um, that has quite political undertones. And then, uh, and then the Palestinian film that will actually go after, go after that film later next year is, is, um, somewhat of a family epic that, mm -hmm. that is about three generations um, of one family and kind of tells the story of, of the land um, from the Palestinian point of view uh, and, and shows kind of the passage of trauma from one generation to the next. It's kind of a story that's really never been told. I mean, it, it goes back in time to uh, 1948, which was, you know, from Israel's point of view, the formation of the state of Israel. And of course, from the Palestinian point of view is what we call the Nekba, the catastrophe. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was, you know, when, right. uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I live in, a, as, as an American Jew, I live in a, in a, I mean, I'm not an Israeli. I don't have any real, my family is from Eastern Europe. Uh, we don't have, you know, I think my parents, maybe six, seven years ago, decided finally to go to Israel uh, uh, to see Israel. I've never been myself, although I've come close a number of times. Uh, but it, it's such a thing where, I, I, you again, you can't even, um, well, you can, of course, express your feelings about uh, the apartheid that is, you know, the um, Israeli-Palestinian state or states. And then, you know, you, the moment you show sympathy, uh, all of a sudden you're, you know, you're anti-Israel. So this is another yeah. conversation for another time. But I just want you to know, no, this is an bringing it up. Yeah, this is an experience. And I think it's really a shame because, <laughs> you know, um, I, as a Jew, for, uh, for, you know, ancestors are from Eastern Europe. Uh, I, I, you know, going through uh, the earlier part of the last century, I just don't see, I, I, you know, I, I don't see how that we've gotten to this point or have in the last number of decades. But uh, so, you know, I think your film will necessarily be controversial just by the fact that you made it. I think you're right. I think it's really interesting being Palestinian in the world because because sometimes um, you are simply controversial because you're Palestinian. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you, uh, right. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, I mean, to say it's challenging is an understatement, but I think it sounds like you understand where I'm coming from. I do. I think so. I mean, you know, my limited understanding anyway. Or, uh, 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 well, it's such a contrast to then doing like a, um, you know, an episodic comedy like uh, Only Murders in the Building. I love that you say that because it's, it's so funny because in my because mind, I'm wrong. it's not at all. <laughs> What's that? Because I'm wrong. It's no, not such a well, big I leap. Mean, I think it's a really interesting um, observation because in some ways it does seem like a really huge departure. But I think that one of the things that I have always been really passionate about, especially as a Palestinian American, is comedy. Mm -hmm. because I will say right now, like the Arab sense of humor and especially the Palestinian sense of humor is really imperative to our survival. Like when I go, when I go there, when I mm -hmm. go like visit, you know, friends in Palestine, I'm amazed at how 
funny people are and how much they lean on a sense of humor to kind of survive the absurdity of daily life there. And I've always, you know, as growing up Palestinian, it was always challenging because the moment you said you were Palestinian, especially in rural Ohio in the 80s, you were very unpopular. You, you know, you definitely got the sense that people didn't like you saying that, that people didn't understand what that was, where it was, what it meant. There were a lot of questions and you were immediately politicized. And so from a young age, I kind of rejected that. And I thought, you know, people need to see other sides of who we are. People need to see family and they need to see love. They need to see the culture. They need to see our humor. And so I started kind of really gravitating towards humor. And, you know, my first features were very much dramedies, like very much, I was really trying to lean into the, the humor and absurdity and, and really just show like the things that make us like everyone else, you know? And, and so um, I think as I've kind of matured in my, in my craft, I'm leaning even kind of more towards that comedy. And I think that in my episodic work, what I started to want to do, because the thing, the great thing about episodic television is that you can really use it as a tool in between your own projects and kind of learn what you want, you know? Sure. So in a way you can kind of, when you get to a point where, oh, like, oh my God, I have the privilege of kind of picking and choosing what projects I want to do now. You know, you're, you're getting, it, it's like, you know, you've put in the work and so you've gotten to the point where you're getting options, which is a great place to be. Um, I started really kind of curating my episodic directing career, like really looking for specific opportunities and, and specific things to learn. And I think like, like getting the opportunity to work with comedy legends, um, really Are getting comedy legends on that my show? comedy skills. What's yeah. that? Oh, I didn't, wasn't aware that there were comedy legends on that show. Yeah, right. I know. Yeah. yeah I'm, there's uh, only, only a handful. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it was a really kind of great opportunity to learn. And then I think the other thing that really drew me to Only Murders in the Building in particular was like not only getting to work with these incredible comedians who like have been making me laugh nearly my entire life. Right. Um, but also it was pitched to me that I would get to direct an episode that was told from a point of view that we don't get to see very often. And so to me, that felt very much within my wheelhouse of like, you know, I'm, I'm someone who sees myself as a filmmaker who's trying to create, you know, film and TV content that has like both heart and humor. But mm -hmm. I also am someone who really finds it important to represent and you know, and represent to me means not only my community, because I'm not only Palestinian American, you know, I'm a queer woman, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so many different things. And I just relate so much to other communities that have all, also been underrepresented and misrepresented. And so when I saw that, when, when I saw that I was being presented with this opportunity, I just, I, I, that for me sealed the deal. I was like, absolutely. I mean, I was in when you said Steve Martin and Martin Short, but now I'm really yeah. in. <laughs> wow. So, uh, and what were, what, what was their, I mean, they're just pros, right? So you show up, they, they just obviously, I'm playing devil's advocate, but they take for granted that you're, you know, just a, a very capable experienced seasoned uh, director and you've got the reins. So, you know, direct or, or was there kind of a, like, who's this person? And like, you know, I mean, cause they're such huge stars, right? I yeah, mean, I don't know yeah. what the egos are like on that set. Well, but. and you never know what you're, you know, of course you never know what you're going to get. And, and um, I don't often get starstruck, but you know, it was like, yeah, uh, you know, again, it's like you guys have been making me laugh my entire life. So um, yeah. No, yeah. they are so lovely. They could not yeah. be more lovely and more. Wow. Amazing. I'm so um, disappointed to hear that. I know. I know. <laughs> I wish I had some juicy story to share with you, yeah. but I really don't. They are absolutely like the loveliest people to work with. Well, um, yeah. I, I just wanted to share that um, with Steve Martin, I was, I, I met him at a, a, like at a record signing when I was a kid, my dad, I was home with a cold or something or playing hooky and my dad calls and he says, you know, Steve Martin, who's just blown up, you know, he's only just like become this, uh, you know, uh, huge amazing. comedy star and done Saturday Night Live. And, and I was a very little kid, but I just went on the subway into Manhattan and I, to, bought a, a copy of wild and crazy guy or whatever the and 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 um and and uh you know 
brought a guy and I brought it to him and I, Mr. Martin, thing, you know, so excited to me. So, and then like, like about three or four years ago, my, my ex uh, was in doing a reading of his play, most recent play. She was uh, doing the cat, like kind of a, you know, one of these readings, private readings. So I was invited to go. So I thought, oh, I was introduced to him again and I was going to start telling him about it. And, you know, he gets interrupted and turns away. <laughs> I was so excited to tell him when I was like, anyway. But you got, did you get it? So you got Emmy nominated for the work you did in the first season. We should mention that, right? For the work right. on probably that very episode, or at least the combination of the two that you directed. The one episode. One the episode. One, the boy oh, right. Episode. It would be for a particular episode. Yeah. And so were they, they must have been very proud of you. Um, The guys? I just assume the, the cast. I don't even yeah. think they know my name. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, no, they, they're, they're, they're so sweet. And right. um, it was, yeah, great no, I to, understand. I, I, I went back and directed on season two before the nomination. So I actually haven't seen them since I've been nominated. Oh, okay. I see. Well, congratulations on that. I'm, I'm being, I'm being told that you, you're, you're on a tight schedule and I did make this terrible um, slip and come a little late. So again, please do, no accept problem. My, but promise me, cause uh, obviously, you know, there's so much more to talk about. Um, and it's, it's not so easy to be nuanced when you have like 15, 20 minutes, but if with the films that are coming up, I'd love to have you back on and where we could talk more about your, your, your work. Yeah, I would love that. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, sure. Uh, I was, I thank you for making the time. I appreciate it. Enjoy, enjoy Absolutely. the mean streets of Boston. Thank you. And, I will. Uh, and uh, we'll talk again soon, I hope. Okay. Me too. All right. All right. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.